Hey, I'm off for JTRPodcast.com and I'm going to show you how to play Don't Mess With Cthulhu Deluxe Edition. This is a game for four to eight players, plays in about 30 minutes, it's designed by Yusuke Sato and it's published by Indie Boards and Cards. Players are either investigators trying to keep Cthulhu from waking and controlling the world, or cultists that want to bring the world to a disturbing end. After several rounds, the players with the fewest sanity tokens are the most sane and will win the game. Start by setting up the deck depending on the player count. You need two to three cultists and three to six investigators depending on the player count. There'll be one more than the number of players. The number needed is shown in the rule book. And you shuffle the deck and give one card to each player and the remaining card gets put aside face down. For the basic setup, shuffle the Cthulhu card plus one Elder Sign card per player plus 15 to 31 futile investigation cards depending on the player count. Again, the number of cards required is shown in the book. And if you're also playing with the Necronomicon expansion, the number of Elder Sign cards you add to the deck is going to be slightly different. First, start by separating two Elder Sign cards and one Necronomicon card. Then take the remaining Elder Sign and Necronomicon cards, shuffle them and add them face down to the three you put aside until you have one card per player. So if you're playing a six player game, you'll put three cards on top of the three you set aside, all the other cards are put aside face down. If playing with the five special investigation cards, simply add these to the deck, replacing five futile investigation cards. Shuffle all the cards into one deck and deal five to each player. Players look at the cards, shuffle them and lay them out face down. If a player has the Insanity's Grasp card in front of them face down, they are not allowed to communicate with anyone until it is revealed. Give a random start player the torch. And the game is played over several rounds. It starts with a player with the torch, taking the torch and put it in front of any card belonging to any other player. The card is revealed and placed in the middle of the table, then the owner of that card then places the torch in front of another card belonging to another player. This continues until the round ends or a certain number of cards have been revealed. Now let's look at the cards and what each one means as it's revealed. If it's a futile investigation card or an elder sign, put it to one side. If the paranoia card is revealed, the player with the paranoia card will control the flashlight for the rest of the round. If the private eye is revealed, the player will secretly reveal their roll card to the player that passed them the torch. If the Evil Presence card is revealed, the player returns all their unrevealed cards to the reshuffle pile. If the Prescient Vision card is revealed, the player reveals one of their cards to all players, then turns it back face down. If Mirage is revealed, take any Elder Sign that was previously revealed and add it to the reshuffle pile. If a Necronomicon card is revealed, put it to one side. But if a Necronomicon card is revealed before the first Elder Sign card is revealed, the round ends and the cultists win. Cards are activated one at a time by placing the torch in front of them in this way until a number of cards are revealed that equal the number of players in the game. Once done, gather all the unplayed cards and the reshuffle pile, shuffle them and deal them out evenly to each player and start a new round. A round will end if all Elder Signs are revealed, then all Investigators win. This will include all of the Necronomicon cards if playing with that mini expansion. It will also end if Cthulhu is revealed, in which case the Cultists win. If a Necronomicon card is revealed before any one Elder Sign symbol, the Cultists win. If after four rounds all the Elder Signs haven't been revealed, that includes the Necronomicon cards, then the Cultists will win. All losers gain a Sanity Token. The game ends once at least one player has three Sanity Tokens, the player with the fewest tokens wins. And that's Don't Mess With Cthulhu Deluxe Edition, a bluffing and deduction game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it, and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter at JTR Podcast or find my blog at jtrpodcast.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue, until next time, keep on finding those elder signs.